Marsupials, that most living animals are endemic to Australia, means abdominal pouch. Marsupials represent the clade originating from the last common ancestor of extant metatherians, the group containing all mammals more closely related to marsupials than to placentals. They give birth to relatively undeveloped young that often reside in a pouch located on their mother's abdomen for a certain amount of time. These animals appeared during the late Cretaceous, the reason why most current marsupials are almost exclusively endemic to Australia is due to its ancient isolation. The island separated from other continents during the Cretaceous period when Pangaea broke apart. The fauna, including the early mammals, managed to remain preserved there until today without facing competition from placental mammals, which became the dominant mammals in the rest of the world during the Cenozoic era. Unfortunately, when humans colonized Australia, they brought along, knowingly or unknowingly, invasive species that pose a threat to the local marsupials. Many of them are now endangered and face the risk of extinction. Although it has been argued on the basis of the shape of referred tarsal bones that didelphodon and other stagodontids were semi-aquatic due to having flexible feet, these traits may in fact be evidence of increased rigidity in the foot. Nevertheless, a recently found and as of yet undescribed specimen, located just 40 meters away from a triceratops in a riverbed, suggests that didelphodon may have possessed an otter-like body with a Tasmanian devil-like skull. Its evolution occurs after the local extinction of eutraconodont mammals, suggesting passive or direct ecological replacement. Given that all insectivorous and carnivorous mammal groups suffered heavy losses during the mid-Cretaceous. While modern marsupials are native only to Australasia and the Americas, they're part of a larger grouping of mammals known as metatherians that were once found around most of the world. They survived through the end Cretaceous extinction and seem to have actually been quite common in the northern continents for most of the Cenozoic. Amphiparatherium was one of the last known members, it seems to have mainly inhabited warm humid environments. Cladocyctus was a fox-like creature that was around 80 centimeters long. It probably hunted for eggs and small animals in the low undergrowth, using its low posture for cover. With sharp canines and slicing carnassials, its teeth were similar to those of carnivorans, although the groups were unrelated. Lycopsis was originally thought to be a dog-like animal, but studies of a well-preserved specimen have shown that it had an unusual mix of anatomic features in its limb bones, with adaptations for both climbing and running. It was probably a terrestrial ambush hunter, but also had the ability to grasp and climb trees in its densely forested environment. Boreina was a predator and had a large head and a long, powerful neck similar to living hyenas. Its legs were cursorial, albeit less specialized than those of wolves or the marsupial thylacin. The most complete specimen is estimated to have weighted 2 kilograms and stood 50 centimeters at the shoulders. Thylacosmolus had an elongated skull with long, curved canine teeth that resembled sabers. These canines could reach up to 30 centimeters in length, making them the largest canines of any known mammal species. These canines were used to deliver a powerful bite, likely aimed at severing the arteries and veins of its prey. It was a carnivorous predator that primarily fed on large herbivorous mammals. Despite its striking resemblance to saber-toothed cats like Smilodon, it was not a true feline. It was actually a close relative to marsupials.
Little is known of the behavior of the long-nosed senelestid. It appears to be terrestrial and nocturnal. An omnivore, it feeds on insects and small invertebrates as well as plant material such as fungi. The senelestid appears to live in burrows and fallen logs, nests may be used temporarily. Virginia possums are primarily nocturnal, they have excellent night vision and a keen sense of smell, which helps them locate food in the dark. Their reproductive system is like other marsupials. Females have a pouch on their abdomen where they carry and nurse their young. When threatened, they have several defense mechanisms. They may hiss and growl to intimidate predators. If these displays fail, they can play dead. Playing dead is an involuntary response triggered by extreme fear. They play an important role in their ecosystems. They help control populations of small animals, such as rodents and insects, and also serve as scavengers, cleaning up carrion and reducing the spread of disease. Australadelphia is the superorder that contains roughly three-quarters of all marsupials. The Australian Australadelphians form a clade, studies showed that the most basal of all marsupial orders are the other two South American groups. This indicates that Australadelphia arose in South America along with the other major divisions of extant marsupials, and likely reached Australia via Antarctica in a single dispersal event after Microbiotheria split off. About 40 centimeters long, Argyrologus had only two toes on its feet, a long pointed snout, and large eyes and ears that indicate it was probably nocturnal. The form of its teeth suggests that it would have fed on desert plants. The small size of Nimeo koala, which requires a proportionately more intensive diet, and large eye sockets, which indicate good night vision, suggest that this animal was much more mobile than the modern koala. The structure of its ear corresponds to that which can be observed in modern koalas, in conjunction with the large auditory bullae, it can be concluded that the it was sensitive to and used low-frequency sounds for communication. The giant koala was about one-third larger than the contemporary koala. Although considered a part of the Australian megafauna, its body mass excludes it from most formal definitions of megafauna. It is better described as a more robust koala, rather than a giant. The two koala species coexisted during the Pleistocene, occupying the same arboreal niche. The diet of koalas consists almost exclusively of eucalyptus leaves. They have a highly specialized digestive system that allows them to process the toxic compounds present in eucalyptus leaves. They have a low metabolic rate, which is one reason why they spend up to 20 hours a day sleeping or resting. They conserve energy by limiting their physical activity and have a slow digestion process due to the low nutrient nature of eucalyptus leaves. There are generally solitary animals. They have overlapping home ranges, but they do not form complex social groups. Males have larger home ranges and may overlap with the ranges of several females. Microleo is a very small species of the Thylacoleonidae family, living in the wet forest that dominated River Slay about 18 million years ago. Its anatomy suggests it is basal to all the known Thylacoleonids, known as the marsupial lions. The type specimen is an incomplete palate that revealed the dentition associated with the family, the knife edged by cuspid tooth and molars that were adapted to killing and consuming animals. Thylacoleo was a large and powerful predator. It had a robust body with a stocky build, short tail, and muscular limbs. It was a carnivorous predator that likely preyed on a variety of animals. Its dentition suggests that it was specialized for delivering powerful bites and cutting through flesh and bones. It may have been an ambush predator, 
using its strength and agility to capture and overpower its prey. It had a semi-opposable thumb, which likely aided in climbing and manipulating objects. Wakalio was much smaller than its close relative, Thylacolio, it would have been a successful hunter. It had teeth specially designed for cutting and stabbing. The genus is from an extinct family of vombatiforms, so it is distantly related to the herbivorous wombats. Fascolinus distinguished from other wombats by its strap-shaped upper incisors. The cranial roof is noticeably inwardly depressed. The species was abundant across Australia, with remains having been found in all states. It is suggested to have had a preference for arid and semi-arid inland habitats, with a diet consisting of a high amount of low-quality vegetation. Though it likely had wide home ranges, it probably did not stray far from fresh water sources. Hairy-nosed wombats have a stocky and robust build with strong limbs and a broad head. They are marsupials and have pouches on their bellies where they carry their young. The name comes from the hair that covers their nose. They are herbivores with specialized teeth for chewing and grinding plant material. Wombats are known for their ability to dig burrows, which provide them shelter and protection. They are generally solitary animals. They establish territories and mark them with scent and feces to communicate with other wombats. Common wombats are also known for their extensive burrow systems. They dig complex networks of tunnels and chambers underground, using their strong claws and powerful forelimbs. These burrows provide protection from predators, regulate body temperature, and serve as shelters for rest and sleep. They feed mainly on grasses and roots, they have continuously growing incisors that help them chew and process tough vegetation. They are primarily nocturnal, meaning they are most active during the night. They are solitary animals, and each individual typically has its own territory. Diprotodon was the largest known marsupial to have ever existed. It was similar in size to a rhinoceros and could reach up to 3 meters in length and weigh over 2,700 kilograms it was a herbivore, feeding on a variety of plant material. Its teeth were adapted for grinding and chewing plant matter. It is believed to have been a relatively solitary animal. However, due to the discovery of fossilized footprints in certain locations, it is suggested that they may have occasionally traveled and congregated in groups. The exact reasons for their extinction are still debated. Climate change, environmental changes, hunting by early human populations, and competition with introduced species have been proposed as potential factors that contributed to its decline. Eurozygoma is believed to have weighed around 500 kilograms, and differed from other diprotodonts in having unusual, flaring cheekbones that may have been used either for storing food or for sexual display. It is thought to be the ancestral genus from which Diprotodon evolved. In an analysis of remains from Cuddy Springs, the carbon isotope ratio suggests that Zygomaturus consumed both grass and leaves, with a dental microware texture indicative of browsing. Preserved remains suggest that it was widely distributed over Australia during the Pleistocene. The morphology of the skull, teeth, and dental microware analysis suggests that Palarchests was a selective browser. The unusual morphology of Palarchestids makes their ecology difficult to interpret. The elbow of palarchests had an unusually limited range of motion, 
which means that the forelimbs would have sprawled when the animal was walking quadrupedally. Eastern pygmy possums are nocturnal, meaning they are most active during the night. They have excellent night vision and use their large eyes to navigate and forage in low light conditions. They are skilled climbers and spend much of their time in the trees. They have prehensile tails that help them grip branches, and their claws are adapted for climbing and grasping. Like other marsupials, common brush-tail possums have a short gestation period, after which the underdeveloped young, called joeys, are born. The joeys then crawl into the mother's pouch, where they continue to develop and nurse for several months until they are ready to venture out. They have successfully adapted to urban environments and can be commonly found in suburban areas and gardens. They often use roofs and attics as den sites and can sometimes be considered pests due to their habit of eating garden plants and making noise at night. Sulawesi bear Cuscus lives in tropical moist lowland forest at elevations up to 600 meters and is diurnal, folivorous and often found in pairs. It is threatened by hunting, collection for the pet trade and deforestation. When approached, their automatic reaction is to wrap their tail around a nearby branch and switch from tripodal and bipedal posture with their foreleg raised. While doing these movements, they're constantly making short, harsh sounds. The common spotted cuscus has a unique and striking appearance. It has a dense and woolly coat that can vary in coloration, ranging from gray to brown or reddish brown. It has distinctive white spots covering its body, which gives it its name. The tail is long and prehensile, allowing for grasping and climbing. It spends the majority of its life in trees. They are primarily nocturnal, being most active during the night. They have excellent night vision and rely on their keen sense of smell to locate food in the dark. Female ringtail possums have a backward-facing pouch where they carry and nurse their young. After a relatively short gestation period, usually around 30 days, the underdeveloped joeys are born. The joeys crawl into the mother's pouch, where they continue to develop and nurse for several months before eventually venturing out. Some species face threats due to habitat loss, urbanization, and predation by introduced species. Sugar gliders are exceptional gliders. They can glide for impressive distances by spreading their limbs and stretching their patagium. Gliding helps them move efficiently between trees, find food, and escape predators. They can glide up to 45 meters in a single glide. They are primarily nocturnal and are social animals that typically live in groups called colonies. Within a colony, they have complex social structures and communicate through various vocalizations. An early relative of kangaroos, Balbaro, it lived during the early Miocene and was probably about the size of a cat. It had unusually enlarged canine teeth forming prominent fangs which may have been used for display and fighting in a similar manner to some ungulates such as water deer and cane lids. It probably wasn't able to hop. Before the direct ancestors of the modern kangaroo appeared lived animals like Nambaru. It was about the size of a dog, with large, muscular front legs. It did not jump and walked on four legs. It had the ability to climb trees from its flexible legs.
Ecaltadeta are hypothesized to have been either exclusively carnivorous, or omnivorous with a fondness for meat, based on their chewing teeth. This conclusion is based mainly on the size and shape of a large buzzsaw-shaped cheek tooth, the adult third premolar, which is common to all Ecaltadeta. Rufous rat kangaroos are herbivores with specialized teeth that allow them to efficiently process tough and fibrous vegetation. While it is classified as a kangaroo, it does not hop like larger kangaroo species. Instead, it uses a distinctive bounding gait when moving on the ground. It uses its powerful hind legs to propel itself forward in a series of rapid jumps. Booties are primarily nocturnal and spend the daylight hours resting in nests, which are typically located in dense vegetation or burrows. These marsupials are herbivorous, using their front paws to dig for underground food sources. They construct nests in dense vegetation or dig burrows in the soil. These nests provide protection from predators and harsh weather conditions. Protemnodon species inhabited various habitats across Australia, like open grasslands and woodlands. Their robust build and adaptations suggest they were well suited for life in diverse environments. They were herbivores, primarily feeding on grasses and leaves. Their dentition indicates adaptations for grazing and browsing on vegetation. Stenurus were relatively large marsupials, with some individuals reaching sizes comparable to modern-day red kangaroos. It had robust bodies and powerful hind limbs, which would have allowed them to move efficiently on the ground. They had long tails that likely aided in balance and hopping. Their forelimbs were shorter in comparison to the hind limbs. Some think that kangaroo was walking instead of hoping. The giant short-faced kangaroo was standing around 2 meters, it was one of the largest macropods known to have. It was specialized for a browsing diet on trees and shrubs, with a relatively flat face with huge deep jaw muscles for grinding up vegetation, and long rake-like claws on each forepaw which may have been used to pull branches within eating distance. Its feet, meanwhile, were each reduced to a single hoof digit, suggesting it bore its weight on its tiptoes in an ungulograde manner. Bora was much larger than any tree kangaroo, weighing in at over 50 kilograms it shows many similarities with them in their craniodental and hind limb morphology, and in spite of its size, shows many of the same arboreal adaptations as its living relatives. Given the arboreal nature of Bora, it seems many regions of Australia were able to better support tree cover in the recent past. The tenkyle is hunted for its meat, and is the main protein source for the residents of Papua New Guinea. The population of Papua New Guinea has increased in recent years due to improvements in healthcare, therefore, increasing need in tenkyle meat which means that more are being hunted. Additionally, they are poached for their fur and are captured and sold as a part of the illegal pet trade. Deforestation in Papua New Guinea affects all tree kangaroos, However industrial logging that occurs in the Torricelli mountain range decreases the species' already restricted habitat. Maclay's Dorcopsis is a small, nocturnal forest wallaby with an average weight of about 3 kg in fur that is dense and dark brown to black. It is endemic to the southeastern part of the island of New Guinea. It is found in hilly areas and lower montane slopes at altitudes of between 1,000 and 1,800 meters where it occurs in both primary and secondary tropical moist forest. Rufus hair wallaby, which is currently classified as vulnerable, has rufous gray fur and is the smallest hair wallaby. It is a solitary nocturnal herbivore that feeds on herbs, leaves and seeds. They prefer spinifex sand plain habitat. The animals build burrows under large spinifex hummocks. The burrows are tunnel-like structures with a spinifex roof. This provides a cool refuge during the heat of the day. In summer,
they are likely to dig deeper burrows to withstand searing desert temperatures. Brush-tailed rock wallaby are herbivores, primarily feeding on a variety of plants and vegetation. They are generally solitary animals, although they may gather in small groups or colonies at suitable rocky sites. They are agile climbers and spend much of their time on rocks, using crevices and ledges as resting places and shelter. After a gestation period of approximately 30 days, the underdeveloped joey is born and crawls into the mother's pouch, where it continues to develop and nurse for several months. Naberlek is a small species of rock wallaby characterized by its gray pelage with reddish highlights and distinctive markings on the cheek and neck. It has a unique dentition with continually replaced supernumerary molars. It exhibits a timid disposition, displays nocturnal behavior, and forages in the surrounding black soil terrain. Its diet includes a variety of plants such as grasses and ferns. The swamp wallaby exhibits an unusual form of embryonic diapause, differing from other marsupials in having its gestation period longer than its estrus cycle. This timing makes it possible for swamp wallaby females to overlap two pregnancies, gestating both an embryo and a fetus at the same time. It ovulates, mates, conceives and forms a new embryo one to two days before the birth of their full-term fetus. Consequently, females are continuously pregnant throughout their reproductive life. Tooth structure reflects this preference for browsing, with the shape of the molars differing from other wallabies. The eastern grey is the kangaroo most often encountered in Australia, due to its adaptability. Few Australians visit the arid interior of the continent, while many live in and around the major cities of the southern and eastern coast, from where it is usually only a short drive to the remaining pockets of near-city bushland where kangaroos can be found without much difficulty. They are gregarious and form open membership groups. The groups contain an average of three individuals. Smaller groups join to graze in preferred foraging areas, and to rest in large groups around the middle of the day. They exist in a dominance hierarchy and the dominant individuals gain access to better sources of food and areas of shade. The western gray kangaroo is also a nocturnal species that varies its core body temperature based on daily ambient temperatures. In the summer, the kangaroo's minimum morning core body temperature was several degrees lower than during cooler spring days. This reduced summer body temperature is thought to allow the species to conserve energy during a time when food availability is low. Red kangaroos are known for their unique form of locomotion called hopping. They have powerful hind legs that allow them to leap up to 3 meter in a single bound and reach speeds of up to 70 km per hour. This hopping motion is an energy-efficient way for them to move across long distances. They are mostly solitary animals but can form loose groups called mobs. Like other marsupials, females can delay the development of a fertilized embryo until the previous joey has left the pouch. This adaptation allows them to maximize the chances of survival for their offspring in challenging environmental conditions. The males have muscular arms and shoulders, which they use for fighting during mating season. The Parma wallaby inhabits wet sclerophyll forests of northern New South Wales. It prefers forest with thick undergrowth and grassy patches. It is mainly nocturnal and usually shelters in thick scrub during the day, through which it can travel at speed along the runways it makes. It emerges from cover shortly before dusk to feed on grasses and herbs in forest clearings. Quakas have a round and compact body with a short tail. Their most distinctive feature is their cute and friendly-looking face, with a short snout and round eyes. They are known for their friendly and sociable nature. They are often referred to as the happiest animal on earth due to their seemingly smiling facial expression. 
They are curious and unafraid of humans, which has made them popular among tourists. However, it's important to remember that they are still wild animals and should not be approached or fed. Long-nosed bandicoots have a slender body with a distinctive long, pointed snout. They have small, rounded ears and a relatively short tail. They prefer areas with dense vegetation for cover and foraging, such as thick undergrowth, grassy areas and areas with leaf litter. They have excellent senses of smell and hearing, which they rely on for locating food and detecting predators. During the day, they rest in nests or burrows they dig in the ground. They use their long snouts and sharp claws to dig and forage for food. The marsupial mole is an incredibly elusive creature, and sightings are rare. Due to its subterranean lifestyle and limited surface activity, it is challenging to study in its natural habitat. It constructs extensive tunnel systems beneath the surface, using its claws to dig through the soil in search of food, which primarily consists of insects, larvae, and their eggs. In an example of convergent evolution, the southern marsupial mole resembles the Namib desert golden mole and other specialized fossorial animals in having a low and unstable body temperature. The weight of speckled dassie ear varies between 200 and 250 grams as its name suggested, its dark gray fur is speckled with long white hairs. It has short, powerful limbs with long claws on all toes, used to dig for worms and similar prey. It is an inhabitant of Papua, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. It is the only member of the genus Neophascagale. Like all thylacinids, Nimbacinus was a dog-like marsupial, though its smaller size makes its appearance more comparable to that of a small fox. Unlike its relatives, its jaws were likely strong enough for it to take down prey larger than itself. Being a predator, it likely ate birds and small mammals. Like Thylacin, it may have been an awkward runner and used stamina to catch prey rather than speed. Thylacins were solitary and nocturnal hunters. They had a unique jaw structure that allowed them to open their mouths extremely wide, enabling them to prey on larger animals. They hold significant cultural and historical importance, particularly in Tasmania. They were a symbol of the island's unique wildlife and featured prominently in Aboriginal mythology. The thylacin is believed to be extinct, with the last known individual dying in captivity in 1936. Hunting, habitat loss, and disease played significant roles in its decline and eventual extinction. Despite unconfirmed sightings and ongoing speculation, there is no scientific evidence to suggest that the species still exists. The numbat has a unique and striking appearance. It has a slender body with a pointed snout and a bushy tail. It is covered in reddish-brown fur with white stripes across its back and rump, which give it a banded or striped appearance. It has a long, sticky tongue used for capturing its primary food source, termites. They play a crucial role in their ecosystem as natural termite controllers. By feeding on termites, they help regulate termite populations, which can be important for maintaining healthy ecosystems. Its population has significantly declined due to habitat loss, fragmentation, and predation by introduced predators, such as foxes and cats. Tasmanian devils are known for their aggressive and fierce behavior. 
They have a loud and distinctive growl and emit spine-chilling screams, especially during feeding and mating. They are solitary animals and are mostly active at night, spending their days in dens or hollow logs. They are scavengers and opportunistic feeders. They have strong jaws and teeth that allow them to crunch through bones. They play an important ecological role as scavengers, helping to control populations of carrion and contributing to the nutrient cycling in their habitat. They are considered a keystone species in Tasmania's ecosystem.